so today I'm not going to talk so much about what we do in terms of research, but I'll talk generally about the conservation work and you know how that you know talks to nature-based solutions and then urbanization, which is always seen as the enemy of, of conservation, and maybe give a few of my thoughts on, on that. Yeah. Um, you know, so conservation, you know, as we know it is more about protection and preserving biodiversity and natural resources. And that's sort of what KWT does and a lot of conservation organizations. And that includes anything to do with, you know, species management. So working um, to restore habitats, ecosystems, and ensuring that any ecological services um, are mitigated, threats against them are mitigated. So as KWT, we do a lot of that using, you know, sound science to guide conservation projects that will ensure that um, biodiversity is protected. Um, and then on the other hand, we have urbanization, which is what a lot of people are used to. And urbanization, you know, drives economic growth. It's where the world is moving to. A lot of people are moving from rural to urban areas and you know research has shown that at least 80% of economic growth across the world occurs in urban areas but then urbanization itself in itself as a means of poverty eradication has you know environmental and climate impacts which you know can't be denied but that's not to say that urbanization should stop happening and a lot of times you know, there seems to be this thought that people in conservation prefer everything to remain natural and, you know, green and that we should not have buildings and we should not have infrastructure. I think the message is that um, urbanization can and should go on because, you know, one of the big things that the world is trying to do is to reduce poverty, pull more people out of poverty. But then how can you have urbanization that does not um, increase climate change and does not increase um, negative impacts mm -hmm. on the environment. And that's where nature-based um, solutions come in. Um, so, you know, a lot of the nature-based solutions around urbanization and conservation really speak to each other. Some of them may not be as directly as, you know, we would expect, but there is, you know, always um, some linkages so in urban areas, you know, some examples of nature-based solutions that can be used are things like green infrastructure, where you have green roofs. That helps because you know you're promoting, you know, um, urban biodiversity, having you know animals and fre plants, fresh air, um, all that you know sort of things. Having um, energy efficient buildings, um, sustainable urban drainage systems, which you know, are constructed wetlands sort of help with water quality. Um, on the conservation side, and this is a lot of, you know, where we come in, it's making sure that restoration activities happen. You know, it can either be coastal habitat restoration where as KWT we are not involved in, but we are strong supporters of people who work in marine life, you know, having mangroves, um, looking at the coral reefs and making sure that they are um, conserved and preserved. Uh, protection of forests and westlands, uh, but then also protected area management and landscape level management more than anything. So one of the, the things that we do as an organization in the Mara is work really closely with communities to ensure and promote, you know, encourage coexistence with, um, with wildlife. And um, I think a lot of people know that some of the challenges that wildlife faces in Kenya are conflict reduced um, space for, for wildlife and all that is a driver of conflict. So how do we ensure or how do we prevent um, conflict, human wildlife conflict from occurring? And sometimes you just have to go back to the basic, what, what is the conflict about? It's always about resources. It's when wildlife and animal and livestock and people, you know, are competing for natural resources like water and grass and, you know, some of those ecosystem services. So what we do is work closely with the communities to try and make sure that we sustain 
these services so that there is enough for, for everybody. And you know, at the same time, putting in, as we talked about, some of the conservation activities that are more directly linked to protecting livestock. Um, so having the community buy in talking to communities about what sort of nature-based solutions work for them, how best can they be adapted to that local situation and the local problem that we are trying to address. Um, and there's always a misconception that conservation and urbanization are at odds with each other. You know, even in nat national parks and wildlife areas, we've got settlements coming up, we've got tarmac roads coming up, you know, you have, uh, you know, electricity lines running across the landscape. But I strongly believe that conservation and urbanization can be mutually inclusive and not exclusive as everyone seems to think. So for instance, you know, when you go to the coastal side, instead of, you know, building a seawall or a dam to deal with, you know, high waves or, or flooding, you know, why not conserve the coral reefs and the mangrove forests, and those are natural systems to protect against these very things. Um, in rangelands, you know, where you have floods and you have landslides, you know, it's about you know, planting the right grasses, the vegetation, and this then will reduce the landslides rather than, you know, putting up walls. And at the same time, you're, you know, regulating water supply, which again is one of the drivers of conflict when there's that competition. So, you know, my belief and what KWT does is having the you know, very sound science to ground any of these solutions into practice and trying to communicate that it can be multifunctional and also working with like-minded people to foster collaboration for success. So like-minded people, you know, can be other projects and organizations, um, government, policymakers, but I think more importantly, working really closely with people who live in these areas that are affected by climate change that want to see, you know, long-term solutions that will benefit them because at the end of the day, you know, when we talk and look at all the SDGs, a lot of them, you know, are around climate in one way or another. If you're looking at food security, if you're looking at life on land and even things like education in rural areas, you know, you can't really expect good education if you don't have good food and you don't have, you know, those ecosystem services that we keep on talking about. So my take home message is that, you know, conservation and urbanization are mutually exclusive and that's what needs to be explored. And also just looking at diversity in the nature-based solutions that are being uh, promoted. I think currently everybody's talking about afforestation. I am all for tree planting, but then we don't need to plant trees everywhere. I think it's, you know, looking at a portfolio that is diverse, you know, there are trees in some areas, better grassland in, in other areas. So I think it's just having that open mind on how best um, to choose and design nature-based solutions for specific areas, you know. Yeah, and that's the end of my presentation. And, you know, I'm hoping we'll be able to have a good discussion at the end.